Now it's actually about mid-June right now and it's hot. We had a couple of days where it was 96, 97 degrees and you can just see the trees start wilting. One of the ways that we keep all of our trees so lush and good looking at Highland Hill Farm is that we have a really good watering system. And this is the watering system right here that we have. And this is a delivery that delivers water to the tree. And the, the best thing I like about this watering system that we have is that when we use it, it's not meant to give a whole bunch of water at one time. It gives water over a prolonged period of time, maybe a half an hour to 45 minutes. And that allows the water to infiltrate into the soil and get into the tree. And that's what we really want. If you take a hose and you just shoot the hose right at the tree, it's too much water at one time and the water runs off. But this little system right here, we have one per tree on all the trees that we have through here. They're sitting out of the ground on top of hard blue stone that heats up during the summertime. And we still have really good looking trees here. So I really do think that this little system here that we have works fantastic. It's a really good system that we have. Uh, when you water a tree, the tree from one spot to another spot may need different water. So uh, suppose if you would plant a tree that's in Pittsburgh versus planting a tree that's in South Carolina, the water that you need to make the tree survive would be different based on the areas that they are. Another good example is that if you have right next to a river or right next to a pond or a creek or a lake, you probably don't need as much water on the tree as suppose you're on top of a hill and there's no water around it, low moisture and lots of wind. So each location that you have needs a different amount of water. But the rule for watering is the same. The rule for watering is to keep your tree moist. And if you keep your tree moist, you're golden. If you get too much water on it, the water gets into the soil, blocks the soil uh, pores, and then air can't get to the tree. If air can't get to the tree, the tree roots usually start to rot. It turns black and we call that root rot. If you don't get enough water onto the tree, the, the tree roots can't uptake enough water up into the tree and at the top starts to uh, weep. If it's too long a period of time, suppose you don't water and it's dry for over a period of a week to two weeks to three weeks, the roots actually start to physically change and they start physically forming a cuticle on the root in order to save the root from dying. And if that starts to occur, like you don't water and it's real hot, the, cu the cuticles start forming, it may take a week to two weeks of watering just to wash those cuticles back off of the, the root and have the roots start growing and up taking water again. So when you're watering, watering just to keep it moist. Don't go on vacation and leave it go for a week or two weeks. You just got to be there, you got to monitor it, you got to make sure that there's actual moisture in the tree. Not so wet that mud blocks airflow, but not so dry that the, there's not enough moisture there for the roots up to support the tree. This is a rotten piece of burlap that we have. And this is typically what we use for our trees when we dig our trees. And this is what it looks like in about three to four months after we've used it. It doesn't last very long. It breaks right apart. Not very strong. But it does the job we need when we need it to use it. And we like to use this because when it, we put it in the ground or if we have a homeowner comes in and not sure how to move the trees, not very good at it, we can tell them that you can leave the whole thing together. You don't have to worry about it because guess what? It breaks down. And in a couple months, you don't have to worry about it and it won't hurt the tree. Well, right before me right here, this is a good diagram of different types of twine that's used. We never ever use this type of twine. This is a plastic nylon twine. It has its advantages in certain aspects, but we believe that the disadvantages are much worse than the advantages of We typically use this type of twine and this type of twine. This is single ply Cecil twine and triple ply Cecil twine. With the advantages of these guys and the disadvantage of this is after it's planted. After it's planted and you have a twine like this, this will decompose. This is very similar to a type of grass that you have in your yard. Decomposes to basically nothing. This never decomposes. We've dug up trees 20, 30 years after it's planted and we still find this twine. It never goes away. Now when we plant our trees, we always try to use the Cecil twine for tying them up and if the Cecil twine's on it, we don't have to take it off. If it's a real windy location, 
I would actually prefer to keep the seats of twine on to help hold the tree together as a unit and ensure that it doesn't break apart as it rocks around in, in the wind. But if we have the cease or this plastic nylon on it, regardless of the location that you're planting the tree at, regardless of how much moisture or how much wind that's there, if you're planting with this type of, of tie-down tie device, it must be removed. It doesn't have to be removed right away, but it's not good that if you leave it on for someone else to remove, and that next person never removes it could be quite a problem. That's a very similar problem that a lot of people have to staking trees, where they stake a tree and they think it's good and it gets out of their mind and they forget about it. And then later they come back and the tie down devices skirtle the tree after it's been staked. So I prefer not to have uh, this type of tie down. I prefer to have this type of tie down so if you have someone and they're there and they decide not to take it apart, it's absolutely fine. Timers on watering trees, it sounds like a great idea, but there's some drawbacks to it. The number one drawback to a timer is that it is set as a regiment, like once a week or twice a week, but trees, they don't know what weeks are, and they know what days are, they know what the temperature is, they know how much moisture is in the ground. But that a timer can't just can't do that. That's why timers are not good at watering for trees that are newly established. Because those newly established trees, they need to be monitored every day. And you gotta go over there and make sure that there's actual moisture on that day. A good example is that if you have a hundred degree weather for one week and you turn on your, your uh, timer and it's on twice a day and or twice a week and you go and your water is Monday, Thursday. Well, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it could be up to 100 degrees. And just the water you put on Monday could evaporate and be gone by the time it's Tuesday. Then Tuesday is completely dry, and Wednesday is bone dry, and the tree's wilting. Thursday it finally comes back on, kicks on, gives us a little bit of water. The tree recoups a little bit, but it's still under a lot of stress. Then Friday and Saturday, it dries out again, bone dry. Sunday, it could be a dead tree by that point. Even though that the foliage is green and it's drooped down real bad, it can get to a point called the permanent wilting point, and beyond that point, it's gone. So if it's too hot, if it's real hot, and you don't water enough with the timer, it can be bad. Now let's reverse it. Let's say that we're in mid-May and we get a torrential rains and it just doesn't stop raining the whole week. We get five days of rain out of seven in a week and it is just oozing with water everywhere. You walk out on your grass and it goes swishy swashy through your feet and then your timer kicks on because guess what? It doesn't know the difference if it rained or not. It doesn't have a, a humidity or a gauge to it. It kicks on because that's the day of the week that it is. Well, it's reliable. Yes, it's getting water to it. But is it needed at that point? That's why when you first plant trees, I would prefer not to use a timer, but instead having somebody actually go out and monitor the tree to make sure that the tree gets enough water. That's, I think, is the ideal way of watering trees.